Thanks for staying with us. There is a satisfying feeling that comes with getting value for money, and that is exactly how every business interaction should be. Good business has never only been about providing quality goods and services. It goes beyond that. A positive customer experience is crucial to the success of your business because a happy customer is one who is likely to become a loyal customer who can help you boost revenue. The best marketing money can buy is a customer who will promote your business for you. One who's loyal to your company promotes your business through word of mouth marketing and advocates for your brand and product or service. What ways do you think SMEs and MSMEs can start to leverage customer experience in 2023? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation and send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. You can also tweet at us at, at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Damnola went to the streets of Lagos to speak with some small business owners on how they are leveraging customer experience. And let's see what she found. How have you been able to manage business, though, considering the hiking price of everything? My dear reason is too high. I be, you know, when customers come seeing, they complain of uh, the food is too small, but I've been telling them that things are so expensive. When I go to market to buy things to prepare the food, the prices of things are so high. On a more serious note, it has been very difficult. Mm. Things are quite different, quite different from the way it used to be. The, we have a, a drastic reduction in customers, a drastic reduction in sales. All these are because of the harsh economic conditions. We've just been doing it by turn up. Just turn up. If, if Most times we sell without gain. Most times we just sell just to make your customers happy so that they can come back again. How do you deal with um, difficult customers? I'm sure, I mean, every business has difficult customers. So how do you deal with difficult customers? Well, <laughs> they're all our customers. Right. There's the cool ones, there's the hard ones. Yes. We we'll still try to go along with them, manage them. We don't have choice. Like they say, customers are always right. So what we try to do is those difficult customers, we try as much as we can to manage them, understand? To, to avoid anything that will lead to um, arguments or disagreements that will lead to maybe violence or... Uh, we still have to keep them in touch with a um, good price that will favor them, that will favor them, that won't um, scare them away. It's been a beautiful day in the heart of VI, where we've spoken to Lagosians on how they handle their businesses, how they manage their business, considering the hike in price of products, how they actually manage their customers, because we know that there are different types of customers. We have the pleasant customers and we have the difficult customers. Well, the use of incentive is a major part of every business, and customer service is a very great part of every business, because if your customer service is bad, you're going to run your business down. Thank you very much for staying with us. This is Vox Pop on The Way Show. Okay, that was quite interesting to see that even on the streets, people <laughs> understand the value of customer experience. Damala, what, do you, what did you notice today? Well, honestly, um, like one guy I spoke to said today, he said sometimes they have to, you know, um, give incentive to their customers. I understand that incentive drive people because if I come to your store today and I know that when I'm leaving, I'm going to get at least a pen. I promise you I want to come to your store tomorrow because I want to get as many pen as possible. Mm -hmm. That's just an example. So that's, I mean, apart from that, you know, customers, listening to your customers' feedback. Mm -hmm. For instance, your customer comes in today and says, ah, this thing that you are selling is a lot, or there's something wrong with it. And then you actually listen to the person and they make amendments just accordingly. By the time this, the person comes the second time, the person realizes that, oh, this person actually paid attention. It's just like when you're in a relationship. Imagine you complaining to your partner every time and a person doesn't listen to you. You feel that you're not, you don't matter to the person. You're not important to that person. Sure. But when you complain about one thing one time and then the person makes an amend the next time, of course, you would, real, you would feel very important. You would feel seen. Yeah. You would feel heard. So I, I, I think that a lot of people, especially small business, actually, especially small business owners, you understand the importance of customer service because they know that it is these customers that give them money. And that's how they eat. Sure. There's nobody sure. else that will sure. give them money. Sure. Exactly. Amola is also a customer experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I'd actually love to hear from you. Hmm. <laughs> 
Speak well, to us. Yes, <laughs> thank you. So, and I like to say, I'm always in customer mode. Mm. And it can be both a blessing and a curse sometimes because you expect certain things from a service provider. Now, I'm very big on communication. I, I believe everybody's big on communication because my experience is basically just communication yeah. because just tell people what they need to know, tell them at the right time, and do all the necessary follow-ups that you need to do. For instance, you're talking about people that are saying, oh, uh, you know, of course, it's affecting everybody. Everybody's collecting. The prices, if, if the prices of my products, if the prices of the, um, of the product goes up from the supplier, you that your the person that's going to sell it, the retailer is definitely going to need to add their own. And then sometimes you we understand, mm. you as the customer, you understand, you see what is going on. But how well are these service providers now managing the customers? Because after everything, you still want their money. After everything that's going on, you want their money and you still want them to keep coming back. Yes. So I personally believe customer experience is the most important thing because any brand that I am interacting with, aside from the product that you're going to provide to me, I am a very, once I'm a loyal customer, I'm an advocate. That's you right, can ask yeah. anybody. Once you've done me well one time, <laughs> the whole world will know about you. Okay. So I totally agree that customer experience needs to be, you know, it needs to be leveraged. We need to leverage it to the core. We need to check the bone, the marrows, and just suck everything out. Yes. Personally, I, I strongly believe as well that customer experience is a very powerful marketing strategy, yeah. which is why I don't understand why I walk into supermarkets these days and then the attendance at the teals can be very rude and sus. I, it, I had an experience this morning, as a matter of fact, it was myself and Damnola. I went to a supermarket, supermarket to buy just a few items because we just had to rush by the supermarket. And then I tried to use um, the, um, what's the called? card to pay and then mm. the lady says oh because it is less than 1000 naira, i can't pay with my card and i said okay no problem let me go back to the card to look for cash i mean i can understand that you guys don't want to incur charges over you know little amounts i went back to car we didn't have up to that amount unfortunately so i went back to her and i'm like okay look this is what it is but i just I was like you know what let me just buy what i have you know the amount worth and then I buy it, and I think it was 279, and I had 300, and I gave it to her, and I'm like, okay, so 279, I need my change. <laughs> and of course, what she says to me is, we don't have 13 naira. And I'm like, you don't have 13 naira. You will give me 13 naira. You have to give me the 13 naira. You better nera. give me. And then she says, take something for 13. I eh? don't want to take anything, <laughs> sister. <laughs> I want my money. <laughs> How about that? You know, and I feel like if she had there are nicer ways, you know, you speak. can tell me, mm. smile at me and say, we don't have that. Even joke and say, I know you won't say that because I didn't want that kind of thing. I would even, you know, smile back and I would simply walk away. But she was ready to give and I was ready to give it to her as well. And we know we had that battle until the manager came. And I'm sure the man looked at me and said, Ah, that's costing this thing. <laughs> but that is the essence of customer experience. It's mm. very important. So even small businesses, large businesses, middle scale um, enterprises as well, they need to understand that customer experience is very, very important. But we have a professional hmm. with us today. Our, our guy, very own. <laughs> <laughs> our, our guy, this customer experience. I'm very excited. I can't wait to hear <laughs> from her. <laughs> with experience in various disciplines, including customer experience, customer service, customer loyalty, digital marketing strategy, content development, and training, both in the public and private sector, across two continents. Hmm. Uti Elu has been exposed to varied business styles, strategies, and approaches. And she has joined us live via Zoom today. Thank you for joining us, Uti. Uti, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, Hi. we can hear you. Hello. Hello. Hi, Uti. Hello. Mm -hmm. How's it going? Very well, very well. Thank you. Okay, so I was saying that you are our in-house <laughs> customer experience <laughs> professional <laughs> so please try my best ah uh, right. great great we can't wait to hear from you tonight <laughs> and we know you're definitely going to give us your very best tonight i will try <laughs> <laughs> okay Uti, so when we talk about leveraging customer experience in our businesses today uh, what, what do you have to say about this well um Customer experience is everything. I think I'm very biased when you ask me this question because 
if you ask me in any business what's the most important thing, I'll always tell you customer experience. Mm. Some people will say, oh, but what about the product? What about mm. the people? Yeah. You know, there's so many other things that people put before customer experience. Um, and it just goes to show the mindset that people have around customer experience. But um, where the focus is, and I like, I was noting some of the things down when the Vox Pop was playing. And we can see that certain nodes are recurring through our current reality. Mm. Times are hard, the economy is tough, people are struggling and trying to stretch their finances and their money to go far. And what does this mean for um, businesses? If yeah. you don't have the income, you can't spend. You, you limit your spend down to the most essential of items. And even when you're limiting to the most essential of items, what are you looking for, right? You're looking for the place where you can get the best deal. Right. Now, in some things, for example, you can't change the price. Let me use something as basic as water. Uh -huh. The price of your dispenser bottles, the price of your bottled water, the price, most of these things, the prices are fixed. It doesn't matter where you, whether you go to um, a big supermarket or you go to a small shop. These things are fixed at a certain price. Uh -huh. So when you come to the point where one of the, uh, the, business, the business owners that you spoke to on the Vox Pop said, sometimes I sell without profit. Right? Yeah. So you are trying to compete on price. I'm trying to get the customer to come back. Another one said, oh, I have to make it benefit the customer. Mm. All of these things are fantastic. But it gets to a point where no matter how much you want to, you can't compete on price because that determines whether you're actually even going to be in business tomorrow. Because the first day you run out of money yeah. is the last day you're in business. That's true. So if you can't make money so if you can't even uh what's it called now if you can't even make money right you say let me break even so i can sell to my customer without a profit but it gets to a point where even that your business can't sustain that anymore so the ability to continue to lower your price to try to incentivize sales is no longer possible for your business there's only one way to differentiate what makes me go to supermarket a over supermarket b when the bottle of water is always 600 dinar. Mm. that's where the experience comes in that's where you start to talk about the place where you can truly differentiate and get customers to keep coming back time after time. And even better still, word of mouth, go out there and tell other people to come to you. So it doesn't matter the product. I love the fact that you gave the example about going to the supermarket, right? And you said the shop attendant was rude to me. I like open air markets. The best place on earth for me, as far as I'm concerned, is Balogo Market. I, I like open air markets. And it's simple. People think I'm crazy when I say it. How can you distress? It's just like, I've heard every excuse under the planet as to why people don't like open air markets. And my reason for loving open air markets is it's so simple. It is the best customer experience I have seen. So when you talk about how people, um, you think that these market traders, they don't know mm -hmm. customer experience. They are the originals, man. Because when you go to the market, yeah. how do they look at the structure? Yeah. All the people that sell tomatoes are on one line. All the people that sell Gary, they are all in the same place. All the people that sell fish, they're all in the same place. What do they do? They just start to try to get your attention. So before you even like, you know, go up close to choose the product, you first of all have to choose whose store to go to, right? And what do they do? Is that's and that's one of the things some people don't like in markets. They're trying to get your attention. They're calling you auntie, auntie, they you know, all sorts. And some people don't like that. Mm. Again, they're different types of customers. But they get your attention, they make a fuss over you. If you buy from them today and you enter the realm of customer, the day you come to that market again, they've come to greet you. Yes. They remembered what you bought. Yeah. They remembered any person you ever came to the market with. Mm -hmm. They will ask after you. They will tell you, Auntie, if you buy this, you need this, you need this. What do you want to cook? Ah, don't forget, do you have this? That's customer experience. All those, uh, when we say um, e-commerce sites are telling you, people that normally buy this, buy this, mm -hmm. the thing that they started, this, they should come to Nigeria <laughs> market. So that's really, for me, what I mean by the experience, right? Mm -hmm. It's the fact that you're now differentiating yourself. When Amolala was talking about communication, it's the same thing for these market people. You dare not give one of them your phone number. <laughs> if they haven't seen you, they will call you. Mm -hmm. Until you haven't come to the market and you're like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. The communication Absolutely. is there. When they get new products, they will call you, they will message you, they will get on your nerves. Mm. But the <laughs> fact is, all of these concepts that we're trying to weave today and convince businesses to do, um, a tomato seller has been doing it for time. Mm. So 
you know, all the businesses need to catch up. But it's, for me, it's the game changer. Yeah. Mm. Okay, mm, very profound. Okay, so Uti, I, I was going to ask, right, I, most small businesses believe that, okay, right, because I'm running this, my very small business where I just sell a few things or I have an, or I'm an online seller or something like that. They don't, I've, I've had, I've had an experience where I bought a product from an, an online store, right, and I wasn't happy with the product and I felt to give a review. And in fact, the way this person took my review, I get that it was a negative review, but she just went off and said, if you don't like it, you go. And I'm like, bro, sis, why, why, why? And I felt, okay, maybe because you feel like your business is, or because I can't see you, or because I can't physically come to you, you know, you think you can just be there and then just speak anyhow. I've had terrible, as a customer, I've had terrible experiences. But then, Uti, what do you think small businesses can do? to improve their customer experiences? So there's a lot that can be done. I mean, first of all is in the planning, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that we find here is that there's all sorts of different types of customers um, in our part of the world, right? Yeah. And a lot of people don't actually know their rights. Mm -hmm. So a store is rude to you or a person is rude to you. First of all, that business owner thinks if this customer goes, another customer will come. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, the amount of effort you're trying to find new customers who you only sell to once, and because of your bad service, they go away, is a lot more work. It's like the 80-20 rule, right? Why are you trying to keep finding you know, people to come and buy from you when you can be fantastic to the few that come, and they can come back and buy again, and they can bring people with them? So it's about the amount of effort and sustainability that you want to put into your business. There are some people that if they don't um, manage their businesses themselves, if they don't look for customers, they will never sell, right? Because the customers they're looking for, there's nothing special about the service that they gave. In fact, the service was poor and that person just goes away and never comes back. Mm. So you find that it is easier for you if you had a bad experience with one product you bought from someone to go back and buy from that person if the service was good yeah. than if it's the other way around. Yeah. Because there's always somebody else selling that product. Mm -hmm. And sure. if that person has a better experience, there's a higher chance for you to go back there. Mm -hmm. So we come back to how can I improve my customer experience? I'm a small business owner. Mm -hmm. Now it's the beginning of the year. People have written down goals. They've written down resolutions. Um, and you know, serious business owners would have put down plans for their business and their goals and objectives for the year. Now, when you do that, right, you need to think beyond uh, how do I find the cheapest product? How do I find customers? How do I increase sales? Those are typically the kind of areas where small business owners will focus on because they don't have a lot of money, right? And they need to turn that money around quickly. Mm -hmm. So they tend to focus a lot on sales. And if they don't take the time to stop and think about the experience, their businesses will kind of experience the kind of... Um, situation that you had at the supermarket with the staff. You know, they forget to train their staff. They forget to tell their staff what is important, right? Yeah. How they should treat their customers. And then the customers come in, whether or not you sell, as long as that person has worked, you owe them salary, right? Yeah. So the person doesn't really care whether they make that sale or whether you leave happy. Mm -hmm. All they care is that they get through 30 days on that job and you pay them. <laughs> They're paid, yeah. So you as the owner of the business need to make sure that they understand that their behavior is critical to, to your business's success, and that is what determines whether they get paid or not. Especially in an, in an environment like Nigeria, where, where people, when they can't pay salaries, they keep working. People work for free. Like, I haven't been paid salary this month, but next month you still come to work. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know? So the truth of it is, you really need to think about it as a business owner. Stop and think about the service that you're offering to your customers. Now, service is only a part of the journey because we've been using the word service in general, people tend to use the word service and experience interchangeably, and they're slightly different, right? So that one time that you went into the store, you spoke to the lady, you needed to buy something, that's a push and pull effect. Because you came in and needed to buy, she needed to sell to you that yeah. service. So she was reacting to your need, right? Okay, yeah. But how did you find out about that supermarket? If you were driving down the road and there was just a door with no sign to tell you there was a supermarket there, how would you know there was a supermarket there? Mm -hmm. Or if you wanted to incentivize, if you were giving discounts and you didn't tell anybody about it, 
It's only the people that happen to walk by that will benefit from it. No, if yes. you had talked more people about it, people would actually come because of the incentive. Mm. So different areas to think about when you are looking at planning for the year. Really, really important that you look at your experience goals. Am I ready to serve customers? Are my staff ready to serve customers? How, most people just think that because um, sales staff or service staff are the entry jobs. You know, everybody just assumes that everybody can be a customer sales rep or a customer service rep. Is the it's where everybody starts their jobs. Right? It's the easiest job to get, right? Yeah. Um, and sadly, that's not the case because what then happens is that it's not done properly. Mm. So you find that you know people are consistently giving bad service, and it's in these small businesses, the sales girl that they they're looking for and paying forty thousand naira and paying fifty thousand fifty thousand naira. Those are the people that do the most damage to your business, mm -hmm. right? Very so true. if you are not teaching that person, so imagine that lady that spoke to you this morning. Mm. Who knows whether she sat in traffic for three hours because there was probably there was traffic because of you. I mean... Then you you come and you're not arguing about thirty naira. And please, 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 if it's you, devil sent to me this morning, please be going. Go. You know. So sometimes you have to think about it that way because. A lot of times in Nigeria, they say, ah, Nigerians don't know how to do good service. Mm. Eh, excuse me. Life is tough. <laughs> so, so business owners, right, there's so much to think about. But you have to be able to let your staff understand that even if you've had a bad day coming on the road, mm -hmm. please remember that times are tough. So if you want people to keep buying so I can pay you, yeah. please, eh, just Put that upset aside. I know it's stressful. You sat in traffic, conductor abuse you. I'm sorry. <laughs> when you sit in this chair, just think of your salary. Mm. First and foremost, so managing the experience that your people um, offer. And it doesn't matter how small your businesses are because we, we've come to expect rudeness in certain sizes of businesses, and it's not right, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. in that sense, right, talk to your people. Secondly, with your business, your product will only take you so far. Mm. Even if I like your product, there's there will be the day that I'll get the bad service for the last time. I'll be like, you know what? Yours is, is enough. I'm not yeah. buying from you again. I'm not patronizing you again. Don't let your customers get to that point. Mm -hmm. At every point in time, you want your customers to be able to say, if you go to this shop, you're going to have a good experience. I always use a particular store um, as an experience that I have. The owner, the, the person that works in this store, the staff that she has, is the only reason why I keep going back to that store. Because the experience with her is so, so pleasant, right? Yeah, yeah. So she has a great product, but it's not the product that keeps me going back. Mm -hmm. It's the service that I get, right? Yeah. And the additional parts of that, the constant communication. Now, when bigger businesses are sending you happy birthday, when they are sending you happy new year, Merry Christmas, yeah. uh, Barker de Sala, they're not doing it because they're nice to do, right? That's the communication part that um, Omolela was talking about, is yeah. customer engagement. Mm -hmm. You have to constantly keep yourself top of mind so that when I need your product, I don't have to start thinking, oh, who do I usually buy this for? You are always at the top of my mind for mm -hmm. that particular product, right? Yeah. So whatever your business is, it's so cheap these days to communicate. Whether it's by email, even SMS is like four naira, right? Mm -hmm. So it's depending on the size of your business. But you have to communicate. So if you can't afford to do SMS, you can do email. You can build a process around collecting your customers' emails, maybe when they're paying. Particularly if you're like on social media, it's one of the things you can collect. So that you can, um, you have a way to consistently reach your customers. Half the time you get new products in store and you're not telling anybody about it. You're waiting for the customers to come to you. But you have a group of customers who have bought that product before mm -hmm. or have bought something similar before. You can create a database that allows you to go back and communicate with these customers. Yeah. But it's not only when you have new products, which is why you wish them happy birthday, which is why you, you do all of that in between, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are the more proactive things that you can do mm -hmm. to improve your customer experience. Of course, there are the reactive things that you can also do um, in the situation like what happened to you. I almost wanted to ask you that. So what did the manager do when the manager came and you, you guys were dragging 
change? <laughs> did the manager make the situation any better or did the manager make the situation any worse? Yeah, he, but I'll come back to that. Um, but then I like what Uti has done. She has actually, you know, talked about the difference between the customer experience and then customer service. I, I was actually going to ask her that question because I hear people say customer experience, customer experience. And I've always wondered, is there really a difference between customer experience and customer service? Also, she has talked on um, training, how it is very important to make sure that your staff is properly trained and how communication, just as Omala said as well. If you are just tuned in, we are discussing leveraging customer experience in 2023 with Uti Elu. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Like I said earlier, Omola and Dami are itching to say a whole lot of things. <laughs> so Omola, go on, let's hear you. Okay, finally. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm just going to continue from where Uti left off. Mm. And I completely agree that um, data collection is very important. Mm -hmm. Because it's, when you, as a business owner, when you're selling, you're selling, you're selling, it's fine. But then business won't always be booming. Mm. the way you expect it to. And I mean, that's just by the way. You also want to build a relationship with your customers such that you are always at the back of their mind when they, are talk when they need something, mm -hmm. when a random stranger talks and says they need mm -hmm. something, okay. when your friends need something, when your family needs something. That I think that's what would ultimately prove how well you're doing as a customer ex in your customer experience. Now, um, I have a question for Uti, mm. and is Uti still with us? Uti, are you there? Yeah. I'm oh, yeah, sure. Okay. So, interesting you use Balogo Market as your favorite market to go, yeah? I completely agree that sometimes it can be annoying the way those guys will keep dragging you, but then it also makes you feel special in a way. I remember the last time I was at the market, I wanted to buy jeans, and they were just rushing me, and I was like, ah, calm down, <laughs> everybody chill. But... <laughs> Um, I guess the question, I had a question I wanted to ask earlier, which is, I know that you've walked across two continents mm -hmm. and that, so that means you have two different, um, you have two different skills to weigh customer experience. So compared to the customer experience you've received in some of your favorite brands abroad, I know it's probably shooting ourselves in the foot, but it's what they try. How would you describe your experience, your, the customer experience abroad to say an African country like Nigeria, for instance? I absolutely love that question, Amalala. Um, I think in all the times we've talked about customer experience on the show, nobody has tried to shake that table. Um, one thing that I like to say is I'm very pro-Nigerian. I think that there's so much fantastic stuff that we do in Nigeria that we don't take enough of time to sing about. And as much as we like to say that the narrative is that we don't do customer experience well in Nigeria, right? I think the example I gave with Balogun shows that we, are, we understand what needs to be done. Now, it can be the context of how we do it is different. Now, what do I mean? So we've talked about the market experience. But in that same guise, right, there are a lot of people that don't like to go to the markets, which is why the supermarkets then came into play. Because some people don't want people dragging them, saying, auntie, come and buy. Auntie, I have this one. So whilst you are feeling special, some people are just feeling harassed, right? And that's why people now, even though the prices are sometimes more expensive, find that convenience is more important for them. So they go to supermarkets. I find that supermarket experience a bit faceless. So I walk in, I push my trolley around myself, I pick what I want to pick. I go, I pay, I walk away. Nobody knows my name. Nobody remembers. You get what I mean? Like, it's a very impersonal experience. And personalization is a, is, is a very important thing for me. Now, when we compare what we have on both sides of the Atlantic, I, I think I like to use this experience to say that Nigerians are doing very well. I had a recent experience. If you go on social media, if you listen to any average Nigerian bank customer speak, you would think that the Nigerian banking industry is the worst in the world. We are not the best, but we are certainly not the worst. But what I want to point out is that we take our customers very seriously. We make um, 
the cu our customers the focus of what we are doing. So I walked into a bank here. My first shock, there was only one person at the door and there was no teller abroad. And I was thinking, so how am I supposed to pay my money in? So I walked up to the lady and said, oh, I'd like to pay money in. And she nudges and just extends her hand to the ATM. She didn't ask me whether I had my card or not. She didn't know whether I could use the ATM. But of course, the type of customers that you would have abroad, most times at least are more familiar. So you won't have um, as many uneducated or unexperienced customers around the banking space as you would in Nigeria. So in Nigeria, typically, if someone who is not as educated or semi-literate is standing at an ATM, typically they would need help. That most of the time is not the case here because people have um, an, an ATM is, is normal. That experience is normal, right? But I go to the ATM and I'm paying in money and I'm doing everything that I need to do. But I'm listening to the conversation of the person who came in behind me. And she says, oh, I want to transfer money. And the lady does the same thing and points at the ATM. And she goes, oh, but I don't have my card. And in a Nigerian situation, the expectation is that, oh, you don't have your card. Okay, let me, let me see what other way I can help you. Um, I can help you do the transfer. We'll look for options. I listened as this woman said, well, we're open till three o'clock, so you can go and get your card and come back. Or do you have access to internet banking? You can do it there. This woman made no attempt to move from the spot where she was standing. Now, had that been in my country, <laughs> they would have immediately brought out their phone, mm -hmm. To which we would have started recording the video, which I will use to trend on social media. Definitely. This woman decided that when she came to work today, she didn't want to help me. She, like, can you imagine? They would tell the bank empty, they would send an angry email, and we would have, everybody would have been running helter skelter. How could you? Why did you? This customer just said, okay. And she turned around and she walked away. Oh, wow. So the difference in these um, two scenarios is that, first of all, the types of customers are different. Yeah. The Nigerian customer is conditioned to, do you know who I am? If I cough you, anything that I want, make it happen. So the battle is that you are now having to try to teach your customer to say, oh, no, we can do this for you, we can do this for you. But because you were not aware, we'll make an accept exception for you. It is typical when you call um, an organization for them to say, oh, if you've called for this, press this. If you've called for this, press that. If you didn't call for this, or if you called for this, dial a different number. It would never happen in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We will find a way to create a process that routes you to the right place where you need to go. So because we understand the uniqueness and expectations of our own customer, we've created an experience that matches. In the same way, in other clients, because they also understand the types of customers that they have, that these customers are used to processes um, and situations that are very fixed and are very, very tailored to their own understanding. So here, you can't create something that just says you can do everything end-to-end -end without talking to anybody because you know that some people don't understand the process. You know that some people are not educated enough to get through it. So you have to have a plan B for those types of customers. It's the same thing as well. So the, here you start to come to the idea of the different types of customers that you have. It is in coming... Um, in dealing with the Nigerian customer that you see that you have a class of customer like uh, the timid customers, the customer who doesn't know, have you seen those customers when you go into a banking hall? They are almost kowtowing and saying, yes, sir, yes, ma, to the person who is supposed to be helping them. So the types of customers that we have determine the type of experience that we give but Nigeria, we're not doing so bad. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uti. I'm sure Dami has something to say too. Well, yes, thank you, Uti. So, um, all right, so I went out to the streets today and I got quite some interesting opinions. Um, but one of the questions I kept asking people is, considering the hike in price of products, yes, how do you make your customers come back? Because there are some products that, okay, maybe you can walk around the prices, you may, maybe you would be earning so much before, and now you're just like, okay, let me just end just little, at least I'm earning, just so I can stay in business. But there are some that you just can't walk around. I mean, the price is high, so you have to just sell high. So how do you make, how do you retain customers 
in that way and how do you offer exclusive uh, exclusivity right now in um, business because especially when it's a saturated market everybody's selling the same thing mm -hmm. so how do you stand out how do you you know like i said offer exclusivity how do you make your customers want to always come to you how i don't know how do you manage that okay so first and foremost it comes with understanding what kind of product you are selling are you selling a product that is a need or are you selling a product that is a want? So are you selling water versus are you selling leather handbag? You know, I can live without the leather handbag. I can't live without water. That's the first question. Because if you are selling water, then to a certain extent, everybody needs water, right? So you should always have customers. So your, your perspective is different from somebody who is selling leather handbags where if I don't have enough money, I will, I will prioritize my food over having a handbag. So it's between needs and wants. So for the customers who are selling items that are needs, whether it's food, whether it's water, that kind of product, right? You need to look at your prices just to say that, is my pricing competitive? Not that you should lower it to get more customers, but is my pricing competitive? So if everybody is selling at, 650, are you selling at 800, right? Now, there are some people that even though some people are selling at 650, they are selling at 800. Why? Because the cost of shop in uh, Abulado or in, in uh, Ibado is very different from the cost of a shop in VI, right? Yeah. So for some businesses, your costs are also higher, which determines or means that your pricing also has to be higher because you want to stay in business and you still want to make profit. So Knowing where you sit on that scale, right? If you can compete on, okay, my pricing is competitive. My product is in need. Next step, how do I get customers to find out about me? Is it in my marketing or is it in my customer experience? Now you can choose the easy route, which is marketing. You go and put uh, social media or you do an advert on radio. All of these things cost money. Or do I want to make sure that every single person that comes into my shop brings me two more people to buy? There are two ways in which I can do that. The experience was so simple. I just buy water. I bought the water. Somebody brought that water into my Okay, um, I, I think we lost a tea for a bit Someone there. Someone decided if... Can you hear me? Okay, oh, yes, yes, we, we, can, can, we can hear you now. Okay, so somebody brought uh, the water into my car. Somebody asked me, oh, um, do you want to buy ice? They've given me oh. right? Or they've decided that there are other things that um, have I thought about buying. Is what okay. Um, it is. So as it is. Living? Yeah, as it is, uh, we're, we're running out of time. I think this is a subject that we need to come back actually, to talk actually. about <laughs> again. So, Uti, I hope that you will do us the honors and then because I, I think we can just keep going on, on and, and on and on. But before we go, I think we have a comment. We have one comment. Um, let's just quickly read that and then. All right. So, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. Leveraging customer experience in 2023. In a nutshell, when we talk about customer experience, it is not funny at all. It is really biting hard. Going to the market to purchase goods now is a terrible nightmare and sad story. The price of things now have doubled and tripled. Sister Uti is right. When you give people your phone number, they will frustrate you with calls and force you to buy goods that you don't want to buy at a particular time. My dear beautiful sisters, Chinelo, nice anchoring of the show today. I'm sure that Sister Uwa will be really proud of you. <laughs> God bless you. My name is Daniel Ilo. Well, thank you regular so fan. much, Daniel Ilo. <laughs> and before we go, do ensure to follow us on Instagram at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us if you missed today's quote here it is again our philosophy has been to take most of the money we would have spent on paid advertising and invest it into customer service and the customer experience instead letting our customers do the marketing for us through word of mouth see you again on monday at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screen